one. All right, all right. If you are on YouTube, tell me here in the chat if you can see me already. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I think people on YouTube, on Facebook can see me as well. If you are on Facebook, say hello to me on Facebook so that I know you can see me and you can hear me. If you are on Instagram, I would appreciate if you could tell me if you are here. Uh, say hello, you know, on Instagram so that I know that you guys can, you know, see me and stuff. Let me see here if I am kind of live i don't know i believe so i believe yes i am live okay i see people joining and saying hello that is awesome now we are gonna be getting started at 605 in about five in about seven minutes from now so for now i want to know about you you are joining now so say hello tell me your name where you are from uh, i i started the lesson a little bit earlier like seven minutes earlier because i wanted to chat i wanted to chat with you guys and get to know you a little bit so we have the three hashtags of the night so that i can know you a little bit so if you are a newbie, hashtag newbie. What is a newbie? You are here for the first time. You have no idea who I am. <laughs> or maybe you subscribed, but you have never watched a live lesson. So if you are a newbie, let me know. And if you are a newbie watching the replay, let me know as well. Regular, hashtag regular. You come here all the time. You're always participating in the live lessons. Maybe not all the lessons, but you are frequently here. So you are a regular. And finally, a BSA. You are a student. You are in my academy, my online English program. So Mario Andrade is a BSA. That is awesome. Dotsa is a regular. That is great. Carla is a regular as well. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching. So you can participate and tell me. Now I'm checking the Facebook for a second. We have Roger from Mexico. Roger, tell me if you are a regular, if you are a newbie, if there are BSAs on Facebook watching me right now. Tell me as well, because I sometimes forget the names. So we have many students joining. For some reason, I don't see... Oh, here on Instagram. Are you watching on Instagram? Are you a newbie? Are you a regular? Are you a BSA? Well, you tell me here. <laughs> now, we see more regulars. Teresa, Mauricio, Selma. That is very nice to have you here. Gustavo. Emma, a BSA, that is awesome. So nice to have BSAs watching the lesson and participating. Wow, no newbies today. I want to see newbies. Don't be afraid of me, newbies. <laughs> and it's so, it's going to be a very nice lesson. Actually, every Tuesday from now on, I'm going to be giving you guys a fire up episode. So every Tuesday, we have a date at the same place same time because i want to fire up your english and i'm going to explain okay so wellington use your hashtag you have a hashtag wellington you are a newbie so you can type here hashtag newbie newbie from sweden that is great but you are brazilian living in sweden that is awesome uh helton are you a regular a, B a, a, a newbie a bsa tell me here in the chat because we have a little time so that I can read your comments. Aku Aku, a newbie from Indonesia. That is awesome. Maiza, Maya is a BSA. That is great. Uh, BSAs are the students in my online program, the Real English Academy, okay? That's the nickname I give them. All right. So very nice to see you guys participating. Tonight is going to be the first episode of the Fire Up Your English series. Every week I'm going to come here on Tuesday and give you a very cool and exciting lesson to help you. Maria is a regular. That is great. Very, very nice. And guys, before I get started, I won't tell you much, but I will give you a spoiler. <laughs> spoiler alert. 
today we're going to talk about a problem that many students have, you know? And I want to know if you have uh, vocabulary problems. So tell me, do you have vocabulary problems? I'm going to type this here. This is just a, a small, tiny spoiler, okay? Do you... Oh, it's even in red. Do you have vocabulary problems? Yes. No. So, so. Tell me here in the chat, okay? Do you have vocabulary problems? Hmm. We're gonna talk a little about that tonight, huh? It's gonna be an awesome lesson. So, I'm sure that after this lesson, your vocabulary is never going to be the same. We have another newbie, Mina. Thanks so much, Mina. That is awesome. Let's see. So, I'm waiting for your answers, okay? Uh, so, Umberto says, yes. Jasmine, yes, I have. All right. And if you are joining for the first time, make sure to use your hashtag, newbie. And if you are always here, you're a regular. Maybe not always, like 100% of the time, but you are frequently here. So, you are a regular, okay? All right. Let's see. So, Victoria says she has vocabulary problems. Maria, big one. Zoe, yes. Maria, hello, yeah. Uh, Gustavo, sometimes. Zanfritas, yes. Okay. Very well. So, I see that this lesson is going to be interesting for you guys. Carla, not much. That is awesome. Carla, good for you. Uh, Leonard, uh, yes, I have. Oh, my goodness. So, this lesson is going to be very helpful for you. Okay. Let's see. So, tonight's lesson, one minute. One minute. Uh, Mario, so, so, Moneda, yes. Okay, let's see who else. Let's see here. Jasmine, newbie from Algeria. Asen, yes, vocabulary problems. Uh, Rafael is a regular. Awesome, awesome. Very good. Let me know if you have vocabulary challenges here, okay? Because that is a spoiler of tonight's lesson. <laughs> okay, another BSA, Angie, hello. Very good, very good. Guys, we're getting started because it is 6.05. And I may not be British, but I try to be punctual. <laughs> Welcome to Fire Up Your English series. I am Teacher Pricks, and I'm going to help you talk to anyone, anywhere, anytime in English by firing up the English inside you so that you can speak with confidence, you know, eliminate your fears. And tonight, we are going to start eliminating your vocabulary challenges, okay? As I asked at the beginning of the lesson, um, you guys, you know, maybe not the beginning because I started earlier. So, I asked you guys if you have vocabulary problems. And some of you asked me, uh, told me, yes, teacher. Oh, these are my notes, okay? Look at how many notes. How many pages, actually? Three pages. One, two, three. <laughs> but don't worry. Time will fly tonight, okay? Uh, use your hashtag if you're a newbie. That's how I know you are a newbie. <laughs> now, guys. Vocabulary problems. We're going to talk about that, okay? We're going to talk about how you can fire up your English vocabulary. And my first question is, my first question, no, my first uh, explanation is what the problem, let me change the color in a second, is not. So, let me see here. Let me change the color. You know, Sometimes when we start talking about vocabulary and uh, the vocabulary problems we have, we, we, we usually have the wrong understanding, okay? And the students end up studying more and more and more vocabulary, but when it's time to speak, the problem continues. The words disappear, students get nervous and anxious, and then they get stuck because they don't know a specific word or a specific expression, okay? So, has this ever happened to you? You were there, maybe having a, co a conversation with someone and then 
the word disappeared? Well, my friend, if you have this problem, there are two things you need to understand, okay? Um, first, let me write here. And I will explain each point, okay? First and foremost, your vocabulary is not necessarily poor, okay? Usually these students, let me get back to YouTube here. Usually students' first conclusion is, well, I forget words, I get stuck in a conversation because of a specific word I don't know, therefore, my, my English vocabulary sucks. I don't know enough words, I need to know more words. And this is a problem because, uh, guys, if you have vocabulary challenges, the concept is never in about uh, receiving more words, receiving more information. It's about the practice, okay? So perhaps the practice, the vocabulary practice you have today is more concerned about quantity, the number of words that you think you should know, when the words that you should actually know, which is not usually a huge number, okay? Now, what do I mean by this, by uh, the wrong practice or uh, the, the, the wrong number of words? As I said, for me, it's not about your vocabulary being poor, it's more about the practice that is poor. The way you study vocabulary is probably lacking the right strategies, okay? And as a result, if you study the wrong way, it will be more difficult for your brain to remember information, to access information, okay? If you don't know me very well, um, I'm a master practitioner of neurolinguistic programming, okay? And I am, let me see something here. Oh, okay, for a second, I thought there was something wrong. <laughs> My heart was like, oh boy, nah. <laughs> now, I, as I was saying, I'm a master practitioner of neurolinguistic neuro programming, and in NLP, that's the abbreviation, okay, we study different aspects of the brain and how the emotions and the language we constantly use can shape the things we do, our reactions and uh, our results in many situations, okay? So, as I said, if you are following the wrong practice, you are going to have the wrong results. And if you only focus, another important thing, if you only focus on vocabulary, ah, look, this may sound a little counterintuitive, but if you only focus on vocabulary to improve your vocabulary and ignore other aspects of the language, you are going to get stuck in the, <laughs> excuse me, in the rat race. Teacher, what do you mean? You know, what do you mean if you only focus on vocabulary and ignore other aspects of the language, you will get stuck in the rat race. I'm going to show you an image to help you understand. Let me just type here your practice may be wrong. Okay. Do you see the image here? Tell me guys in the chat. Julia, no English and no Portuguese, okay? If you can't speak in English, if you can't write in English, don't, don't comment, okay? So I'm removing this, uh, this uh, comment. You are more than welcome to participate in English, okay? But not in another language. And this is to everybody. Only English. I do this with my students. No Portuguese, no Spanish, no Italian, just English. <laughs> so... If you keep following the same kind of practice that is wrong, and if you keep thinking that you have to increase the number, you have to study more vocabulary and more and more and more and more and more, you're going to be stuck in this drawing that I'm showing you here on the screen. You're going to be stuck in the rat race, okay? And that is not a very good thing. It's actually a crazy thing to do because doing the wrong thing repeatedly and expect a different or better result will drive you crazy and will make your brain uh, get even more stuck, okay? So this is um, a, a very uh, important point that you guys need to understand at the beginning of this lesson, okay? And guys, important, 
I'm going to be showing at the end of the lesson, just so that you guys know, so that you stay until the end. I'm going to be explaining you what you need to do. I'm going to be giving you a step-by-step -step of how you can improve your vocabulary, of how you can fire up your vocabulary. And more than that, we're going to do this practice together today, okay? So we have a lot of good stuff coming, but stay until the end. Otherwise, you may miss the best part of the lesson, which is when we actually start to implement the changes that I'm going to recommend here, okay? So, until the end. <laughs> Hashtag until the end, you know? Very nice. I see that you guys can see the image. So, this is the rat race, okay? And guys, it's interesting because this concept of the rat race happens in many different aspects of our lives. Many things that we know or maybe we don't know exactly that uh, are wrong and we keep repeating and repeating and repeating and expect a different result, expecting to improve when we're following the wrong strategy. And this is probably happening to your English vocabulary, okay? And we're gonna change that. Tonight, we're gonna plant the seed we're gonna light the fire. <laughs> We're gonna light the fire, but you will have to keep going. And I'm gonna give you instructions so that you can keep applying the recommendations I'm gonna give you tonight, okay? Now, the second thing that you probably, you probably do, I'm gonna type here for you guys. Okay, guys, now the second thing that you probably do is make up for the words that you don't know, okay? May and what is to make up for? Huh? I'm using a phrasal verb. To make up for means to compensate for something lost, for something missed, or for something deficient. An example, because I, I feel I have the impression that I don't know words, I study more because I want to make up for the fact that I don't have a good vocabulary. So I do more, I study more, I write more words, I study more words, I create more lists. So you are trying to compensate for your vocabulary problem by studying more and more words, checking more and more and more words. So you don't need more words to make up for your vocabulary challenge for the vocabulary problems you have in a conversation that's actually the wrong way to go okay because if you are following a strategy that is not really helping you then it, it's only going to make this problem bigger okay and I, I think i've already talked to you guys here on my channel about the snowball effect okay if you have a problem in the foundation of your vocabulary practice if you just keep adding stuff and adding stuff and adding stuff, you're just going to increase the problem, not solve it, okay? Now, one big disclaimer that I have here, um, I, I don't mean you are going to learn all the words in the book, okay? That's not it. <laughs> I don't mean that with the technique I'm going to give you, you are going to know a dictionary. That's not my goal. What I mean is you're going to fire up the vocabulary you have. You're going to light the fire. That's the, that's the connection, the association that I'm making with fire. But you're going to bring what you have and use it efficiently and confidently. And as a result of this um, activity, you are going to improve your vocabulary and remember words you study. Okay, so uh, that's a very important disclaimer that you guys need to know. Uh, but teacher, okay, I understand, okay? Um, I understand that my vocabulary problem may not be necessarily vocabulary. I also understand that I may not need to compensate for the words I don't know by studying more, okay? So how, what do I do? How do I overcome this challenge? How do I, bang! beat this enemy, you know? And here, guys, the first thing you're going to do is... Oh, let me see. Uh... <laughs> the first thing you're going to do is hit the like button. 
<laughs> you didn't see that coming, huh? So if you want to improve your vocabulary, you are going to hit the like button and support the channel, you know? And if you are a newbie, you're gonna subscribe because why not, you know? Subscribing is fun. You become part of this family of English learners and every week we're here together. So that's the first thing you need to do. <laughs> well, that's not. Please don't go. Please don't go. Dun, 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 dun. Don't go. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm 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 going to be serious now. I'm going to put the thing that you need to to know. Okay? So so far you understood what your vocabulary problem is not, okay? And the two solutions here, oh, studying more words not going to help you compensating for uh the the lack of words and studying more. No, okay? Um the problem is not necessarily in your vocabulary. It could be connected to the process. So these are two things we have learned so far. So I'm reviewing because this is a lesson, okay? Are you following? Are you catching what I'm saying? Now, first thing you're going to do, if you want to eliminate the, pr the problem of uh, uh, vocabulary, okay? One second. The first thing you're going to do is eliminate the traditional kind of vocabulary lists, okay? And why do I say traditional? I'm going to give you a recommendation of a list that you can use, okay? Again, um, when I say eliminate the, the, the traditional method, the traditional, excuse me, the, tra the, the traditional kind of vocabulary list, <laughs> I mean the exaggeration, okay? So if you are too worried about the number of words that you have, I see that I, I always participate in Facebook groups where people talk about English and ask questions. And I see that some students have a number, a number as a goal per day or per week. Now, you can have an estimate, okay? But if you focus too much on the number, and as you keep going, you may get a little frustrated and create the wrong association like, oh, I don't remember all those words I'm studying. So let's cut down a little, okay? So this is my first recommendation. Be careful, reduce the crazy list. You know, I saw a guy once and I'm not lying. He said 10,000 words. And I was like, wow dude knows more than me probably you know i've never stopped to think about um to think about the number of words jill if you if you are asking me this question you are not following the lesson you um improving your vocabulary is not like oh just do this because if you want that there are many short videos you can find on the internet to give you that what I'm doing here is taking the time to prepare a very in-depth lesson to show you what you need to do. And basically what I need to do here is a deconstruction of mentalities and problems and concepts of people uh, that people have regarding uh, vocabulary and the process of learning and then start to give you ideas. Right now, I'm talking about things that you need to eliminate so that we can begin to follow the right process, okay? So if unfortunately that is not something you enjoy, then bye-bye, bye-bye-bye. <laughs> All right. Guys, so it's not about the list, okay? So if you have, if you have the habit of constantly piling up list of words, we're gonna change that tonight, okay? We're gonna do a different kind of list that is not very long and doesn't focus on the number, it focuses on different things, okay? The second thing you are going to do is... One second, I'm writing so that I can talk. Mm, let me do one second just so that I can no it didn't work let's see if you guys can see it yes you can see it 
Okay. Yes, you can see it. So good. Guys, the second thing that you're going to do if you do that already, okay, is eliminate translation. Because many times students study vocabulary by using the translation process. The process I'm going to show you by the end of the lesson, it doesn't use translation. And if, if you get stuck during conversations, it means you use a little bit of translation or even more than you should. Again, oh, teacher, so I will never use translation again. No. Teacher, I'm studying and I'm writing something in English. You know, I'm writing an essay to practice and I don't know a word in English. Can I Google the translation? Of course you can. That's basically what we all should do. Teacher, I'm reading a book in English and I saw a new word I don't know. Can I Google the translation? No. That's what I'm talking about, okay? Your main focus should be on trying as hard as possible, as much as possible, to find the explanation and understand by using examples. If after trying two, three, four times, finding different sources, you still couldn't manage to understand, then you can use the translation. But try to focus on understanding the word instead of simply translating the words. Because if your vocabulary practice focuses on translating words, by the time you have to talk to someone or you need to have a conversation, you know, at a party or a restaurant or in a meeting or in a job interview, your brain is going to follow the same process. It'll make you translate things, but that is going to slow you down. And this is the moment when students, English speakers in general, get stuck because they're thinking of translation. They will begin to think in their language and try to translate the entire phrase to English. And that is not a very good process, okay? So I'm trying to make you establish this new practice so that you change this, so that you can reduce how much uh, uh, you get stuck, how much you get stuck in conversations, okay? That's a very important thing. Now, the next one. Let me see. One second. I don't want to type and write because then I get a little confused. <laughs> The next thing I'm going to, to tell you is, okay, you're going to study vocabulary based on experiences you have in English, okay? Uh, um, my goal here, and I'm going to show you in the practice that I prepared for you guys, is to give a personal meaning to what you learn, to what you study, okay? So if you just look at a word, of course, words are words, okay? They're words. But when we use a word to describe something that only happened to myself, you know, that only happened to you, then that word becomes special. Then you give a personal meaning to that word. Can you do that with everything 100% of the time? No, but this is a good practice to study a lot of things in English. And if you want to be able to talk about yourself, express your opinion, make new friends, speak freely in a meeting, then this is the kind of stuff you need to focus on. You need to give a personal meaning to the words you study. Now, when I say give personal meaning, I'm not saying give a new translation to the word. You're not creating a new language. I'm saying, what I'm saying is, you're going to connect that new uh, expression, that new word, with an experience, with something that has happened to you, with something that is important to you. That will make your life easier, okay? Because it'll be easier for your brain to remember that information, that piece of information. Any kind of um, piece of information, instruction, experience, story, that is connected to an emotional aspect, to some kind of feeling, to some kind of emotion, will be remembered more easily by the brain, okay? We are humans, we feel, that's what makes us special, I think. <laughs> so this is a good point, and I'm going to show it to you how to do it. The next thing, also another thing that I'm going to teach you tonight. It's something that I do with my students in the academy. And they are doing a good job. Yesterday? No, yesterday, no. Last week, 
Last week, we were having a conversation class, a group conversation class, and many times the students had to do this, okay? They had to practice this, okay? Um, now, teacher, may I use a dictionary English to English? Yes, that's what you should be doing, okay? Awesome. Now, the next thing is practice paraphrasing. We're going to do this a little today, okay? If you want to fire up your vocabulary, to light the fire, <laughs> I need a, a better, uh, I need a better uh, sound effect to my match, lighting up a match, you know? If you want to light up your vocabulary, you know, if you want to fire up your vocabulary, it's time to practice the art of paraphrasing so that you can talk to anyone, anywhere, anytime. Because that's what I mean when I say, I'm Teacher Pricks and I'm going to help you talk to anyone, anywhere, anytime. When I say that, here in my mind, I'm not saying, I'm going to help you know all the words in the book so that you can talk to anyone, anywhere, anytime. Uh-uh. When I say I want to help you talk to anyone, anywhere, anytime, I want to help you with the strategies that will make you talk to people, whether it's at the airport or at the supermarket or at the hospital if you're sick, using the vocabulary inside you right here. No, I'm kidding, right here. <laughs> But with all the emotions and the love in your heart, okay? And there is a technique, there is something you can learn, which is called paraphrasing, okay? The students, the students in the academy are constantly doing that, and uh, it's a very, very important strategy. Now, okay, I will give you a pricks plus, okay? There's another thing that you can do. I like giving extra stuff, and then we're gonna move on to something more practical. Uh, and guys, a little theory doesn't kill anyone. Anyway, pricks plus tip, okay? If you get nervous all the time, if you get stressed all the time, and as a result, your English communication, your vocabulary is, you know, hindered, you feel like you cannot talk the way you want and you forget the words, then you need to practice a little brain relaxation. And I'm not going to be all alternative here, but basically what is a, a brain relaxation? Guys, when we are under pressure, when we are feeling a lot of stress, our nervous system, and I'm going to read this, our nervous system tells our bodies, you know, to release stress, hormones including adrenaline, noradrenaline, and cortisol. When all of these hormones are fired up <laughs> in a bad way, it's hard to focus. It's hard to concentrate, okay? We get extremely anxious, extremely nervous. And when this happens, our respiratory system is also in danger because we are too stressed. And when all of this is happening, it's hard to think. It's hard not only to think because you are thinking, it, you don't stop thinking, but it's hard to concentrate. It's hard to access language memories, information you have about the language. So the technique is very simple. The, breathe, uh, the brain relaxation is basically to breathe in and breathe out. Okay, let me share this with you guys. Um, here on my channel, sometimes when I'm making live lessons, I get anxious too. So when I am too anxious, even if I'm during a conversation, I start to speak a little bit more slowly and I begin breathing in and breathing out. This simple practice relaxes your mind and when your mind relaxes it's easier for you to access information in your brain so the more you panic the more stressed you get the more anxious you feel the less access to information you have because your body is too busy releasing stress hormones and making you feel more stressed and more anxious. 
So it's important to understand that. I practice brain relaxation every time, every time I'm nervous, if I'm having a very stressful moment, if I'm feeling very stressed, if I have the opportunity, at the moment I'm getting extremely stressed, I stop and I, I, I sit down for like five minutes, I turn off everything, cell phone, computer, and I practice brain relaxation, breathing in, breathing out. If I don't have time to stop everything I want, like during a live lesson, I can get a little stressed. When I'm having problems with the computer and the phone, then I chill and I speak a little bit more slowly and I breathe in, I breathe out, I make a joke. You know, sometimes I make a joke to help me relax, to help me calm down. So you need to learn strategies to calm the brain. Because if you don't calm the brain, it doesn't matter how much you study, you won't be able to communicate, okay? Now, I had this student many years ago that uh, he had many challenges. I'm not going to be, oh, no, his English was perfect. No, he had many challenges. That's why we were working together. And we started using the paraphrasing technique. We started working on his English. He, he was a salesman, a very important salesman. And every week he had meetings uh, with international customers. And his boss loved him. His only problem was the, his English. He had some vocabulary problems. That's why he started working with me. And then we started working on paraphrasing. I started showing him the techniques that I'm going to teach you in a few minutes. First... We talked about the problems he had. We started working on the lists he had and we reduced the number of crazy lists he had. We understood his vocabulary practice to see where the problem was. The same thing that I'm doing with you now, okay? And then we moved on to the paraphrasing, which is what I'm talking to you guys about. This student was addicted to translation. He translated everything. He never took the time to read a word in English and find the explanation in English. So he had this, um, this factor that made his life even more difficult. He, really, he was really addicted to translation, okay? And uh, as we were practicing, I was teaching him how to explain his world, his opinion, his strategies, despite the mistakes and despite the words that he didn't know. Because sometimes, especially if you are a business person, when you are uh, at a meeting and you really want to say something very specific that you don't know in English, you know in your language, but you don't know in English, you can get stuck at that moment. And the words don't come out. I'm sorry. Because you want that word. So you torture your brain because you don't know that word. So I started to show him like, hey, brain relaxation... Stop torturing yourself because you don't know a specific word in English. It's real time. It's fight. You got to do what you got to do. But I'm going to show you some good strategies to help you do that. And we started doing that. Okay. We started uh, practicing uh, uh, paraphrasing. And that's how he began to feel more confident. Yes. He began to feel more confident. And the reason he began to feel more confident is... He stopped torturing his mind every time he didn't know a word. He worked around. He found a way to explain a word he didn't know. Now, this may seem, oh, but that's so easy, teacher. Oh, I knew that already. If you knew that, you would be doing that. And when you start doing this, you will see that you calm your mind when you do that and you make you feel like, oh, I can speak. I didn't know some words, but I did a good job. Because your emotions will be in check. You will be showing your brain that, hey, um, I can do this. I didn't know that verb or that expression, but I was able to communicate. And that's firing up your English. That's what I mean by firing, firing up your English. But you need the right strategies to do that, okay? But uh, if we relax the body, we're going to collapse. No, that's not what I mean. When I mean relax the body, I don't mean uh, going to sleep, taking a nap. Uh, no, that's not what I do. Katerina, that's a good question. Sometimes the explanation of some words can be difficult. I'm going to show you how you can level that up. 
Okay, so that's a very good question. Stay with me. I'm going to give you some examples to help you with that. But I agree, some words are difficult, but we're going to get there, okay? Now, guys, teacher, okay, so I explain. But I don't want to be basic forever. I don't want to have a basic English forever. So I feel that if I always have to explain what I don't know, my English is too basic. Guys, that's actually the opposite. The more you show your brain, your capacity, your ability to stay in English, speak in English and not panic and run away or not even try to speak, the more confidence you are going to build. And when you feel confident, you will speak better. And not just that, when you are feeling positive emotions like confidence, you know, when you're feeling more confident about your English, the things you study come to you more easily because the strategy I'm, I'm going to teach you, the, the examples I'm going to give you of paraphrasing shouldn't be the only thing you do. Of course, you're going to learn new words and expressions and vocabulary. You will need to dedicate some time to learning new things, okay? We all have to do that. But as you are practicing describing things and describing information, you will give the, 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 the emotional support your brain needs to access the vocabulary that you're studying. And gradually, you will be remembering more words. Okay, it's a process. Don't think that this is going to make you basic. This is actually going to make you a communicator, someone who can talk, someone who can really express himself. Okay, that's the way. Now, uh, first things first, let me give you an example, okay, uh, of how you can eliminate the translation. Da, 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 da. Because I told you that you would need to eliminate translation. And for some reason, uh, and for some people, that may be a little challenge. So here, I'm going to show you one example. Teacher, I want to eliminate translation. How do I do that? How do I start doing that? Okay. First, brutally honest. When you start, it'll be difficult okay if you always study based on translation when you remove the translation your brain will be like oh, where's the translation so you will need some time to adapt okay so if you use translation a lot start slowly start removing translation gradually and then you will get better at this okay so here is an example let, da, 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 let me write it. I'm, I'm going to paste what I'm writing. Okay, let me see. So let's say you don't know the word selfish. Okay, teacher, I don't know the word selfish. Do you know the word selfish? Do you know the word self? Do you know the muffing man? The muffing man, the muffing man. Who lives on blah blah street? <laughs> it's a song for children, you know. I was a babysitter, so I know many songs like lullabies and songs for children. So, do you know the word selfish? Tell me yes or no, or maybe. Okay, let's see. I'm waiting for your answers. We have a delay, so that's why. Jose knows the muffin man. <laughs> no, he knows selfish. Okay, that's good. Mina knows the word uh, selfish, okay? Josias, Dotsa, Caterina doesn't, Carla, yes. Very nice. Good. Emma, yes. Maria, yes. That is good. Okay, very nice. So, thinking of a person who needs to eliminate translation. First, 
you will need to go to the dictionary and check it out. And here I have the translation, well, the definition already. So here, selfish means, let me increase the size. Ba -da -da -ba. Selfish means to think only about yourself. This is an adjective. It's a quality, a bad quality, okay? Not a good one. <laughs> so when you check the dictionary, it usually tells you what kind of word it is. It's an adjective, it's a quality, and it gives you examples. So, okay, you check this word, all right. It means to think about yourself, only about yourself, all right. Teacher, I checked the dictionary, I did it, I saw it. Now, what do I do? The next step is, can you explain this word you have studied now with your words? Can you find a way to explain selfish different, differently from the way I did now? That's the strategy, okay? So you use the dictionary, you learn what the word is, and then you try to explain, okay? So let's see, I prepared some explanations. Ah, but it's easier for you. Of course, I agree with you, but this is just to show you that you can do it. It's possible to do this with many words, okay? So here, someone who doesn't like to share, and I saw this in the chat, someone posted this in the chat on, on YouTube. Someone who doesn't think of other people. Someone who doesn't care about other people. Someone who only thinks about what he or she wants. So these would be some possible explanations that you can create. There are more, okay? I could be here and give you more and more examples. Now, we can take this to another level. Remember the emotional aspect, connecting with you, connecting with your life? Do you know any person who is selfish? Uh, maybe a friend from work, maybe a family member, huh? Do you know anybody who is selfish? Tell me here in the chat. You don't need to say who it is. I will not tell anyone, I promise. <laughs> but, oh my goodness, where is it? Okay. Uh, do you know anyone who is selfish? Tell me here. I'm going to type this. Do you know anyone who is selfish? Yes or no? So tell me, anyone who is selfish? Maybe the family mm, or in your circle of friends? Maybe you have a good friend, but this friend, selfish. Never shares, you know, your friend is there with a nice piece of chocolate and you're like, no, this is my cake, <laughs> the cake. This is my chocolate. I'm not going to share. So this person is selfish, okay? Uh, Mario, this is this is time, okay? This is something that you need to practice. It's never going to be perfect, but you have to be consistent with the practice so that you can see results. The idea is not to be good at this. The idea is I'm in a conversation and I do it. I speak. I'm not thinking, oh, okay. No, I just go and I explain. That's what I intend for you guys to do, okay? Ah, uh, so Josia says, of course I know a selfish person. Alessandro, many. Oh my goodness, I'm sorry about that. Uh, Elizabeth, oh, hi, teacher. Yeah, you didn't answer. <laughs> uh, Carla, of course. Let's see. Uh, let's see who else. Jose, my brother. Tough, huh? Uh, Uh, the conversation between BSAs, we have the conversation uh, group lessons, uh, four conversation group lessons. We're going to do the third this month. And um, on the Facebook group, you can do a little networking and get to know the other sardines. So read the emails I sent, okay? And participate in the challenges on, on the Facebook group. Paolo, I know many people. That is awful. Okay. So you see, connect. And then you are going to write, you're going to write down, oh, this person is very selfish. You write the name of the person, not here, okay? And then uh, on your notebook, when you're practicing, 
Oh, selfish. Selfish is a person that doesn't like to share, that only thinks about himself or herself. I know a selfish person. He is blah, blah. His name is blah, blah. Her name is blah, blah. And then you explain why you think that person is selfish. Oh, I think that person is selfish because he never shares his food with me. Um, he uh, is very... He never likes to share the things he has. He never donates money to people. He only thinks about his plans, about his ideas. He doesn't care about my feelings. Explain. This is a good practice. That's what I mean. You don't need to study many words. You need to study right. Okay? You need to dedicate time to studying the right way. Okay? All right. Good, good, good. All right. But teacher. Okay, so now we understand the translation. Do you guys understand? So... Uh, I'm typing. Do you guys understand? I just gave you an explanation real quick to tell you how to eliminate translation. Do you understand this part? Because then I'm going to move on to the next one. I see some people here on, on Facebook. Patricia knows a friend of hers. Very nice. Yes, it's tough. And sometimes we have friends who are selfish. Tough, tough, tough. Okay. Uh, I agree with you, so, uh, Josias. Many people are selfish with their knowledge. They don't want to share information. That's really bad for the world. Okay, so tell me if you understood this process of eliminating translation. Now, this is not an overnight process. You're not going to wake up tomorrow and eliminate translation completely. It's a process, okay? You have to keep following it. That's important. So awesome, I see you guys understand, that is great. Thank you so much, I'm happy you guys understand because then I can move on to the next part, okay? Teacher, how about the lists? I like lists, I love lists. Please, I want to keep with the lists. <gasps> dun, 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 dun. I need more effects. <laughs> okay, the second thing. Okay, first and foremost, you can keep the list. Fine, yo. You can keep with the list, but... but, but, but uh, I want you to focus on subjects rather than instead of words, okay? And I'm going to give you an example, all right? I'm going to be... I'm going to give you a good example. The problem is not the list per se. I think lists can be very helpful. The problem is the way you structure your list and the way you revisit your list. So my focus here is to show you that when you connect your list to a subject, it is easier to learn, okay? So for example, let's say you want to know more uh, about adjectives. Last week I gave a lesson to my baby sardines, a conversation class about uh, personality in the family, okay, in the order of siblings, in the birth order. And during our conversation class, we talked about personality and everybody had to describe uh, their personality, if they were different from their siblings, their brothers and sisters. So it was a very nice, excuse me, it was a very nice conversation. Now, here, let me take this to another page. You can create a list to describe people in your family. And you will describe here in this example your family's personality. So here the list, it's a list. You're going to describe your family's personality, okay? For example, I want to describe my mom. So I think of the things I want to say about my mom. Ah, teacher, I don't know how to say this quality in English. You have to find out. So you will need to translate in this case, okay? But after you discover what the word is in English, then practice writing down an explanation about that personality that you learned in English, okay? So this is how I would describe my mom. 
She's responsible, she's caring, she's a little bossy, friendly, and thoughtful. After that, you can go and write down the explanations about the qualities about your mom. So, oh, okay, my mom is, uh, my mom is thoughtful. Okay, the thoughtful means showing that you think about other people, that you care about other people. Caring means you are kind and you are helpful. Bossy means you like to give orders. Do this, do that. Friendly means pleasant, nice. Now look at how all the things you are learning about your mom. Not about anyone else. Oh, teacher, unfortunately, uh, I don't have a family member. I don't have a, a mom. Okay, describe someone else. This is an example, okay? That is important. This is not just any list, okay? You are describing your mom. You are describing someone important in your life. It's a list that describes people you love, okay? Inside the academy, they have a vocabulary list, but these words they're learning will be used in the reading exercise and in the listening exercise that are connected. They always have a subject inside the academy connected to the words they're going to study. And as I always recommend the students in the academy, you don't need to memorize all the words, you don't need to know all the words, focus on the words uh, with which you have a more emotional connection. Something got your attention. That's the recommendation I give them and I'm giving you this recommendation right now. It's something that you can do that is very efficient, okay? Good. So, do you understand the concept of list that I give you? Tell me here in the chat if you understand. Nobody understands? Oh my God. <laughs> I see some, some answers. You understand. So, Katerina, yes. Mina, yes. Dotsa, yes. Yatsimeira, yes. Nancy, Mario. Come on, we have 100 people watching on YouTube. Tell me more, tell me more. You watching. You eating a piece of chocolate right now. Yeah, I know you. You're eating chocolate, right? <laughs> I wish I could be eating chocolate, yo. Huh. Anyway. <laughs> awesome. Now I'm happy. I see your explanations. I see you guys understand. That's good. That makes that makes teacher pricks happy. You know? I may not have a chocolate right now, but I'm happy. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay, moving on. Paraphrasing. Okay? Now we're going to get to the good stuff of paraphrasing. Let me, oh my goodness, where is it? Okay. Actually, we are already doing paraphrasing. Okay. So, uh, okay. Paraphrasing is the next point here in the lesson. I talked to you guys about paraphrasing and I gave you the story. I told you the story about a student I had a few years ago who was a salesman. Well, he probably is a salesman until now. And I taught him the art of paraphrasing so that he could talk to anyone, anywhere, anytime. Okay. Now, paraphrasing is going to help you eliminate anxiety when you are speaking English. Okay. That's my goal. This will fire up the English inside you. And what is the fire here? The intensity is going to bring the best of you. Because if you have been studying English for a very long time, this information is here and here. You have to feel it and then you can bring it. Ah, I like it. You have to feel it and then you bring it. <laughs> but when you focus, here it's a... Um, I, like, I want to get your attention to this, okay? When you focus on what you don't know, you fire down your English because you are giving too much attention to, oh, I don't know how to say Leviosa in English. 
You're giving too much focus to what you don't know. And you are in the middle of a conversation. You got to do it. You got to talk. You got to explain yourself. Instead, I want to focus on what you can do with the English you have. That's what I mean, firing up your English. Because you focus on what you can do. I am very solution-oriented, okay? My focus here is to give you a solution. Because believe it or not, guys, even I have vocabulary problems. Even I use paraphrasing. I use paraphrasing all the time, okay? So, I want to show you that you can do this because I've, I've been doing this for the past 15 years. I've been teaching my students to do that. And that is going to help you build up the confidence so that you can talk to anyone, anywhere, anytime. So, we're going to practice together now, okay? Are you ready? Are you ready to go? Are you fired up? Are you ready to go? <laughs> Are you ready to go? Are you ready to practice paraphrasing with me? Tell me here in the chat, yo. Let's see. Awesome. So tell me, are you ready to do paraphrasing? I keep asking these questions because I want to know if you're paying attention. Ah, that's how the teacher knows the student is listening. So I hope you are. I hope you're there. I hope you're listening to me. So, who is ready to do paraphrasing? I see some yeses. Okay, I'm ready. Patricia, yes. Awesome. Elizabeth, I'm ready. Mina, Nancy, Katerina, always ready. Born ready, baby. Oh, that is fired up. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, awesome. So, here we go. I'm going to give you the first word. Don't think too much. If you know the word, of course, if you don't know, it's fine. But if you know the word, just tell me which, how you could explain this to me, okay? All right. Shopping cart, go. We're going to use very simple words here because I want to show you that even you can do this with basic words, you can do this with more complex words. So here, I wanted to explain, <laughs> fired up. I wanted to explain shopping cart to me. So here, people on Facebook, shopping cart. Post in the chat. Okay, an item you can use when you buy things. A feature that allows you to buy online. So here we have different explanations. It can be used in the online world and it can be used in the physical world. Okay, so it's possible. Good. Next, I want more explanations. Shopping cart is an object where you can put things in the supermarket. That is awesome. Perfect. It's necessary for shopping. Okay, very good. It's a card. Okay. Uh, you are at the supermarket with your shop shopping cart. Okay. So you see the connections you made with the, sh the shopping, uh, the supermarket or online when you're buying things. Okay. It's a prepaid card we use to buy things. I've never seen this use. Uh, maybe something more local. Okay. Uh, it's a thing where you can put the things you buy. Excellent. That is awesome. Uh, let's see. It's a device where you put things inside. Uh, good. Uh, it's a list. Could be. Maybe you have the items in your shopping cart. Then it's true. Uh, it's a small car you use to carry things you buy at the grocery shop. Okay, the groceries. Okay, groceries fine. Good. Very good. Guys, if you were in a conversation at the supermarket and you completely forgot shopping cart 
you get to a security guard or uh, the the cashier and you and you tell them, hey, where can I find that thing? You know, you put the products inside. Oh, the shopping cart. Oh, thank you. Where? Oh, over there. Oh, thank you so much. That's speaking. Okay. Ah, oh, but teacher, I had to remember shopping cart. Every time you put this pressure in your brain, you are stopping you from firing up your English. Okay. You guys did a good job here. That's communication. That's speaking the real English. Okay. Moving on. I, can't, I don't know if I will be able to give all my examples because I have to finish this. Bakery. Let's get started. Bakery. Number two. Bakery. So, what is bakery? Second word now, guys. It's where we buy bread. Yes, that's good. Good explanation, Silvana. Excellent job. Uh, it's a place where people sell meat. Do people sell meat at the bakery? I don't know. Okay, maybe they sell cheese and ham and sausage, but meat, I'm not sure. Uh, it's a shop where you can buy bread. Okay, good. These are good explanations. It's a place where you buy bread and dessert. Mm, yeah, I love desserts. A place where we can buy different kinds of bread. Very good, Michelle. Uh, it's a place where you do bread, where you make bread and cookies. You don't make the bread, but I would understand. Okay, very good. It's a place where uh, it's a place where you can buy cake and bread. Where? Okay. Uh, where people, a place where that sells cakes and cupcakes. Very good. Very good. So you understood it again. Okay. So if you are having a conversation and you want to describe a place that you go every morning and you don't remember bakery and you want to describe this place. Oh, every morning before going to the office, I go, I go to this place, you know, to buy bread, to buy like a cupcake Oh, you go to a bakery. Yes, that's where I go. Thank you. Well, we can buy milk too. I agree. We can buy bread, cake, we can buy anything we want. All right, all right. Guys, you're doing an, an amazing job and I would like to continue this, but I'm going to be giving you homework, okay? Let me put here on the list. I'm going to be giving you uh, this exercise for you to do in the, in the comments of this lesson, okay? All the words I prepared that I wanted to do here together with you guys, but I don't have time, are these ones, okay? Good. So these are the seven words. So the first exercise that you have, I'm going to type this down, okay? Homework. So post your answers in the comments of this video. Not right now, because I'm going to finish the lesson right now. But don't go. I have more. What I want to do, I want you to do this week to help you eliminate translation, to help you create a good list, a good contextualized list, and help you practice paraphrasing. The three things I talked to you guys about tonight to fire up your vocabulary so that you can speak with more confidence, okay? Here, I'm going to type this here. Okay, let me see if you can see it. Yes, you can see it. So here, this week, you are going to create... Let me go back a little. Okay. This week, you're going to create your personal list. 
Remember when I gave you the example about describing the personality of my family? I, I gave you the example of my mom, but now you can do about other things, okay? It can be about anything, about food, about movies, about a sport, about a, a specific place you enjoy, about family memories, yes. And then you will connect the new words you learn with those experiences, okay? And as you learn this vocabulary, you are going to practice describing the words in English. And you will use paraphrasing to do that. So these are the two exercises you have. Post in the comments when we finish the live the explanations in your, in your, the way you would explain to these seven words. And then this week, create your personal list, connecting something interesting and learning the words at the same time. If you enjoyed this lesson, my friends, share it with your friends, hit the like button, but more than that, you know, study this, review this lesson, because there are many valuable strategies to help you fire up your vocabulary. And if you enjoyed the episode, the episode one, tell me in the comments as well. Other than that, my friends, I hope to see your comments here in the replay. I want to see your explanations to the seven words, okay? Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.